I've been asked this many, many times, and it's about time I responded. Andrew, what do you think about airbags? I want to talk about adding airbags to assist the rear axle carry a load. Okay, this is just my opinion. I have had experience with them. I fitted them to the rear axle to assist the load carrying of my first South African built troop carrier. And I never used them even when fully laden. And the reason why I never used them is because I never needed them. Because I got the spring rates and shock shocks right. The car rode extremely well even when at maximum GVM. Full water, full load, two people on a long trip. It performed really, really well. And the back was down ever so slightly when the vehicle was standing. When the vehicle is standing and it's down a tiny bit at the back when fully laden, why is that an issue? Is it just the looks? I don't have a problem with it. When it slouches and that the back axle bottoms and you feel the back kind of lazily banging down, well, you've got a problem. The problem is springing. The springs are too light. So you want to make the springs a little heavier to carry that load. Or if it's down slightly when fully laden and it bangs down, maybe your shock absorbers are just unable to control the compression. So when it comes down, the, the, the shocks are just allowing it to come down. It's not really a spring problem, is it? It's a weak shock absorber. The shock absorbers are not able to do the job that they are being asked to do is control the compression of that spring. Slow it, control it. And if it's not doing that, then it might not be the springs. It could be the shock absorbers. So there's a balance. Once you've got the balance right and your vehicle is at low load, maybe slightly high at the back and at maximum load slightly low at the back, sounds like your springing is probably fairly close to being correct, but if it still bangs down at the back and bottoms, maybe it's your shock absorbers that need either adjusting or replacing with a better, more capable shock absorber. So where does an airbag come in? I have, for example, a vehicle that is well sprung. She does well, heavy and light. It's a, down a tiny bit at the back when maximum heavy, but halfway through the trip, I've used half the fuel and half the water. She's straight and it handles that and I like the and I want to tow but when I tow mm, I'm putting an extra ball weight of 100 kilos on the back there and she's sitting mm, now it tends to bottom now it's tending to bottom what do I do airbags that's when airbags show their metal show their value is because you can when you're not towing, not use them at all. Your vehicle without uh, anything on the tow bar shouldn't need airbags. And then when towing, or when extremely heavy maybe, but really towing really is the thing because that's when you're hanging a big weight right off the back of the car. Okay, and that's where an airbag can be so useful, is to pump it up a little bit until you get a nice balance of driving, you'll feel it, you'll eventually know how it should sit when stationary to, to feel good when towing and driving. Okay. If you are putting an airbag in your car just to correct the car's standard weight, then perhaps you've got something wrong. Airbags are going to spoil the ride. They will especially airbags that are fitted inside coil springs. I drove a vehicle like this once and it was a, a mate's 105 and it was grossly overloaded. And he kept saying to me, oh, I need, you know, I need to do this, I need to do that. And he had the heavy springs in it and it was still overloaded. And I said to him, your car is, is his car, we actually weighed it. It was over GVM by something like 40 kilograms over GVM, empty, no fuel, no water, empty, was over GVM. 
And I said to him, you have to lighten, take and take some of the stuff off it. You've got so much stuff. He was a bit of a stuffaholic. And um, he put airbags in the, he said, and I, he asked me about airbags. And I said to him, look, it's going to ruin your ride. And it potentially could break your chassis. You are stretching the vehicle at the moment beyond its capabilities because it's not designed for that weight. And you are forcing it to carry that extra weight by putting in a spring, in another spring inside the existing springs. You are going to break something. It's just a matter of time. He didn't break anything, but that's because uh, on the first trip he did with it, uh, he reported back to me that it was undrivable, that it was so bad because to support the additional weight he had in the vehicle, pumping up the springs now inside the coil springs, it basically stops the spring from doing its work. OK, so now you have a grossly oversprung vehicle. The shock absorbers are doing nothing because they're not compressing. It's like a, a stiff. The give of the axle has been removed completely because the coils cannot compress because they've got something stopping them compressing. Air springs have their place, no question about it. But <clears throat> if I can't get this vehicle right with the standard springing, I will consider air springs, but I'm very reluctant. As you may know, the spring in, springs inside this vehicle now <clears throat> are lighter than I think it might need. So here's my dilemma. If I get to the stage where the ride when empty-ish, in other words, not trip heavy, is wonderful, and at the moment it's very good, <clears throat> parabolics, um, train tamer parabolics on the back, train tamer um, variable coils on the front, and ARB, the B, old man EMU, BP51 shock absorbers. The combination seems to be working extremely well, <clears throat> but I'm not at this point very, very heavy, and I haven't tested it at trip weight at this point. I might find, and I think it's likely, that I find that the back springs are a little bit too light when fully laden and perfect when empty-ish general use. Should I upgrade to the heavier spring or put in airbags for those occasions when I'm full? And that is the question. I am a little reluctant to put in air springs because of my previous experience. But at the same time, something is saying to me, hey, if you can have a spring with the range of handling it brilliantly when light, which it's doing now, and handling brilliantly when even at maximum load, surely that is the impossible dream. But maybe it is possible with the addition of adjustable airbags on the back axle. Because if you think about it, it's not that different from somebody towing, is it? I've got a light, a vehicle's perfect when unladen and when full, it's a bit down at the back. Well, haven't I just described what it's like when towing? I know that coil springs with airbags inside, just it ruins the ride instantly. I've seen it more than once. If you have a coil sprung vehicle and you want to put in airbags, don't put them inside the springs. <clears throat> that I'm quite strong about. If you have a situation where you are thinking on those days where I'm maximum load, I need a little bit of help, then air springs are worth thinking about. Because to me, here's the key. They're helper springs. They're not more suspension. It's not your standard. It, it's not a suspension. It's a help. They, they, they should be called helper springs. They're helping in times where you need it. I've been doing a lot of research since I actually made this video and this conclusion that I'm putting together now is actually two weeks later. I've sent it out to some of my Patreons. Some of them obviously have a lot of experience with this kind of thing. And um, my conclusion is this. 
I will not be fitting airbags to my trip carrier. The, the, the trouble with airbags is, and this is across the board, adding airbags to a chassis designed with load points in mind, the spring hangers, the radius arms, the panhard rods, all of those connections have been designed by engineers to withstand the stresses of axle moving, load, torsional movement of the axle, all of those things. By adding air springs, you are adding new stresses to parts of the vehicle that are not designed for those stresses. They're just not because the engineers didn't plan for that. And if you have a look at um, the history of axle breakages and, uh, and uh, chassis cracking chassis and things like that, airbags are to blame quite often. A vehicle will be able to withstand overloading to a point. Add airbags to that overloading and it will break it because now those overload stresses are not stressing the parts built for load carrying. They're stressing parts that are not engineered to carry any load at all. Nope, airbags are not for me. Thank you so much for watching. These videos are made possible by contributions from Patreons. Join our Patreon family now.